And Dr. Ken Murray joins us tonight. You saw him in our story. Welcome, Dr. Murray. Dr. Murray, what kind of reaction did you get when you wrote that article, How Doctors Die? There was an overwhelmingly positive reaction. Uh, it, it actually surprised me. Um, both physicians and um, non-physicians commented greatly, and the physicians were um, very positive in the sense that they said, this was my experience too. And the public who commented um, told a whole series of stories, oftentimes of situations where their loved ones didn't die with dignity, uh, really quite heartrending stories. And maybe you can tell us more specifically, what do you actually see when you're dealing with <clears throat> elderly people at the end of their lives when it comes to, say, a feeding tube or a ventilator? I've never actually seen those things applied. What does it look like? Well, although in modern medicine we try to be as dignified as we can with, uh, with the technology, there, there isn't a lot of dignity that I would ascribe to use of feeding tubes and ventilators. With uh, feeding tubes, you're putting a tube in which uh, patients hate, um, and I have to tell you it really seems somehow a little inhuman. Um, and they hate it so much they try to pull them out universally, so we usually end up having to tie them down in restraints or put them into some sort of gloves so they can't get a hold of the tube and pull it out. With ventilators, you're, um, you're fighting it because your natural impulse is to breathe, mm -hmm. and when we use a machine to breathe for you, you tend to want to fight that, and that doesn't work very well. So we have to paralyze a person, and when we do that, um, you, we're in a situation where we have all our sensory component present, we just can't move. Oh my gosh. So if something hurts, we can't say anything. Um, and so it, it's a terribly frightening uh, experience. So we usually have to put people in comas. So there's no quality of life when you're in a coma. And so we're talking about elderly people now who are frail anyway. Yes, at, the, at least in the end of life situation, um, we're not talking about a temporary thing. We're oftentimes talking about to the end of their life. Now, what do doctors say to each other when they're looking at a patient who's at the end of life, maybe in a coma, unable to speak for themselves or do anything? What do you say to each other? Well, there's, there's a lot of gallows humor that's involved with that, but, um, but quite seriously, we, we will look at a patient like that and say, if you find me like this, please kill me. And, and we mean that seriously because that's, that's our worst nightmare. How about the families, the families who are so emotionally connected to this person? Well, it, it's hard for them. Um, it, it's actually easier for the patient because they're, they're going through it. But the family is completely disconnected. And studies will show that about half of families will support what a, what a patient wants for themselves. But a, about half the families won't support what the patient choices are. And they will sabotage it, or when it gets to the point where the patient can't make their own decisions, they will, they will circumvent their own desires, which oftentimes is to keep a person around even when they have no quality of life. Especially difficult when the patient can't speak for themselves. And then there's a slippery slope. You might need a small intervention, antibiotics, or just, you know, maybe a CAT scan. I mean, CAT scan. And all of a sudden, all these interventions have accumulated over several weeks at the cost of several hundred thousand dollars. Well, once again, we're talking about people who are terminal. Okay. And uh, in that setting, um, treating things which are maybe easily treated but which will kill you quickly and painlessly, I'm not sure that that's a, that's a reasonable thing to do. Um, we, we can treat pneumonia, we can treat um, uh, a heart attack, for example, but, uh, but in those situations you pass painlessly and quickly and we're saving them so they can die of something worse? Wow. Cost is another issue to consider here as well. Well, I don't tend to focus on the cost. I, I really am looking at the quality of life, mm -hmm. but, um, but the cost is unbelievable. Uh, we're talking ten, twenty thousand dollars a day when you're in an intensive care unit, and uh, and the costs accumulate uh, to just an unbelievable degree. They often bankrupt families. Um, a person's estate may be completely removed. And this is when people are in the hospital when they want to be home anyway. Yeah. Dr. Ken Murray, thank you so very much for your thoughts and your perspective. Thank you, Val.